Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're at NAB 2016, and I have Canon's Paul Hawkshurst here to talk about some of the new stuff that's going on with Canon at the show. So, do you want to dig into? Um, I know that you guys just announced a compact servo 4K lens. That is correct. Um, this is a very exciting project because this was a, an area that Canon really saw a void in the industry. Um, there's a lot of servo lenses that are up in the $30,000, $20,000 price range. And then on the lower end, in the $2,000 price range, we have our still glass, our EF uh, L-series glass. Um, so there was really nothing in between that for um, casual shooters or prosumers or uh, even amateurs who wanted to get a city servo uh, style lens. So now we have the 18-80 to 80, uh, compact servo lens, which is really a true hybrid between our L-series lenses and our uh, cinema servo lenses. Um, it's a uh, great design. It's 18-80 uh, to 80 is the focal length. T4.4 all the way, no ramping of the iris, so all the way from uh, wide to telephoto. Um, it is fully parfocal, which is a big thing um, because that's a necessary item in the film industry. Um, and then it is very, very lightweight, 2.6 pounds. It's uh, a big deal. It is a huge deal, um, especially because it's going mainly on our C300 cameras and our C100 cameras, and a lot of these lightweight uh, production cameras. So it's very necessary to make sure that the balance is equalized and I feel like this lens is, is perfect for that. Um, so um, no new cameras at the show, but you do have some firm, firmware updates. So there is one one little camera that we have. Oh, okay. So it's called the ME200S. Um, it's a multi-purpose camera. So last year we announced the ME20, which was a, a box camera used mostly for surveillance sure. and wildlife yeah. and other types of purpose. The M, the M stands for multi-purpose. That was a, a full frame uh, camera that had a top ISO of 4.5 million. This new camera, the ME200, is the baby brother of that. It's the same physical design, um, same outputs, everything, but it has a super 35 millimeter sensor with a top ISO of 204,000. Um, so really, we're, we're aiming to do with this camera is to see where people do with it. I was just going to say, yeah. who, do you, who do you see the user base being? I mean, right off the bat, we're looking at surveillance, looking at uh, wildlife. Anywhere that you need to put a small, the camera's about that big, so anywhere you need to put a small camera But that can in, be used in, in productions as well. I mean, exactly. inside a car or somewhere that you can't get an actual yeah. camera. And so that was actually our surprise because last year, um, with the ME20, we released it seeing and thinking, okay, this is going to be a very technical, very scientific camera because of uh, its high ISO. But now we see people using it for feature films, using it for a lot of creative uh, uh, work. And yeah. so we're going to see where this new camera, which is you know, not as powerful in terms of ISO, but has autofocus. Right. So, so you're like, here, go use it. Yeah, and see, let's see, we'll what, see people, what happens. See what yeah. people do with it. Yeah. Okay, well let's get back, so you have a firmware update on... C300 Mark II. Okay. Uh, the C300 Mark II has a significant firmware update. Um, it has a new log curve. So in the camera there's Canon Log, there's Canon Log 2, and now there's Canon Log 3. Uh, Canon Log 3 is really more of a hybrid between Canon Log uh, 2 and Canon Log 1. Um, on Canon Log 2, you're using the full dynamic range of the sensor. Uh, and a lot of people came back with feedback and saying that, well, this is a little too much. We're getting, you know, we're getting some issues that we don't want to, to really use because we have so much dynamic range. So we've been able to go back, reformulate a new log curve that uh, tones down, down to 14 stops instead of 15 stops. Um, we're getting a lot of really good feedback from the post industry on it. But not only that, we've gone in and we've recalculated the route algorithm for Canon Log 2. So and now it's not the same curve, the same 15 stops of dynamic range, um, but now just reformulate it so that we condensed a lot of the, the noise in the shadow area and a little bit of the artifacting that people were um, experiencing before has now okay. been virtually eliminated. So it's like, a, it's like a brand new log curve in itself. Very, very exciting. And that's available now? The that update? will be available on July 28th. Another big aspect about that um, firmware update is we're adding an ACES viewing LUT into the camera. So when people start their ACES workflow, we can now view that directly from the camera. Um, now this goes hand in hand with our DPV 2410 reference monitor, uh, which is also seeing a firmware update as well. 
Now the big one, this is uh, an actually a very, very exciting, almost unprecedented firmware update because we're adding support for Airy RAW into the DBV2410, meaning that the camera, the monitor will now deep air Airy RAW and that you, so you can view it in the log curve on the monitor. Um, in addition to that, the firm, firmware update is adding a split screen option where I can view log footage on one side and a LUT applied on the other side. So I have a direct comparison on the same monitor. That's pretty cool. Yeah, some pretty amazing work. Yeah, and um, when is that update built? Uh, it's coming soon. Okay. So. All right. So. Yeah. So we've got the new compact servo 4K lens, and we've got a firmware update, um, two firmware updates, and um, people can go to your site to find out. More Absolutely. Detail? Okay. Well, and what is your website? Uh, Can is Canada. Canada. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you so for much. Coming. Randy Altman with Close Perspective, NAB 2016.